I would like to appreciate the little they did as they starting their because when they went to the bush they had issues they were fighting for. Part of it was democracy, constitutionalism and other things. And Uganda we we had NRM facilitated for us to have one of the best constitutions we have in the in the in the in the region and uh, they did some more things that are really good in the first 10 years of service but after that uh, Mr Mseveni and uh, his colleagues moved away from the 10 point program or from the promises they made to the public and uh, started uh, serving themselves instead of serving the citizens of Uganda that is why you remember after the after doing doing so good uh, making uh, good constitutions we people started altering them for their own benefits uh, the time limits were removed from our lovely constitution uh, of recent they've also removed the age limit the the more difficult path is where citizens realize that they are living as hostages in their own country because i think in this country we live like hostages uh, where you know the security forces get all these people who are, who are frustrated and want to to protest and uh, and demonstrate which is a legitimate constitutional right and then they are beaten like cows so so citizens are going to reach a point where they rea where they say enough is enough and at that point they are going to take over the mantle they will confront the security forces they will collapse they will even they can do actions that can collapse the economy even even the more than it has done they can take over an election process and either and make sure that there are no elections so there are so many things that citizens can do to be able to regain their power because all all our power as citizens has been taken away uh, by the use of guns and by use of money the nrm or the ruling party has a uh, captured all states or government institutions and using it and using them on uh, to, to, to oppress the people who come out as opposition or advisors to the government because being in opposition you actually advise government on where they are going wrong so that they are able to do the correct thing but NRM government, which is the ruling party, has not uh, has not uh, embraced the advice, so they've turned out to to to, to dehumanize people in our uh, opposition. Uh, an example will be His Excellency Robert Chagulani Sentamo, the president of the National Unity Platform, and also the hopeful president of this country, Uganda. Uh, we remember in the Arua saga, he was beaten up totally, and it is disheartening that the president. The current president, Yori Kagutam Seven, came out bragging on how his state, uh, his, uh, his state machinery, which is supposed to use uh, for the people of Uganda, was used against Honorable Chiagulaji because he's one of the most beloved uh, presidents, hopeful for Uganda, for, for the hopeful presidents for this country, Uganda. It did not only stop at the, his uh, presidential opponents, but it also went as far as members of parliament. For example, Honre Bozake was also badly beaten up and, and to, to an extent that he's lame in uh, the Rua saga, even uh, in this COVID uh, situation in parliament as uh, they were trying to deliberate and uh, oppose uh, the um, amendment to, to remove uh, age limit from uh, the constitution. So opposition has received its bit of opposite opposing. It has, it has received a fair, a fair bargain of uh, opposing a dictator. So most of the opposition leaders have been uh, dehumanized, they have been, uh, hi, hi, have been, let me say, tortured, traumatized and all kinds of things, which is not a right thing to do in a democracy like Uganda. I would really think that there are only two solutions. One is, uh, is the easier one where President Museven realizes that what he's doing, uh, everybody, every other strong man has done it, from Libya to Egypt uh, to Tunisia to, to Angola to Zimbabwe to everywhere. So he can realize that and decide to, to, uh, to, uh, you know, to invoke his patriotic spirit 
if he still has one, uh, to be able to say, no, I need this country. I need to help this country to move beyond myself. The, the more difficult path is where citizens realize that they are living as hostages in their own country. Because I think in this country we live like hostages. Uh, where, you know, the security forces get all these people who are, who are frustrated and want to, to protest and, uh, and demonstrate. Which is a legitimate constitutional right. And then they are beaten like cows. So, so citizens are going to reach a point where they, realize, where they say enough is enough. And at that point, they are going to take over the mantle. They will confront the security forces. They will collapse. They will even they can do actions that can collapse the economy even even the, more than it has done. They can take over an election process and either, and make sure that there are no elections. So there are so many things that citizens can do to be able to regain their power because all all our power as citizens has been taken away uh, by the use of guns and by use of money.